Not Austria. Not Bohemia. Seriously, not even a great Ulm. But the Ottoman Empire rules over the Holy Roman Empire. How did it happen? Welcome guys, Lucas here. Let's be honest, the Ottoman Empire is one of the easiest countries to play in Europa, Universalist 4, which does not mean that it is boring. Because today, I plan to become the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. The beginning is basically the same. We are making a claim on Byzantium, which we will want to conquer as soon as possible. I could finally learn where it is. We divide our fleets in half and send half to patrol the trade in Constantinople and the other half to patrol Ragusa. That's the whole area. Another issue is the designation of our rivals. It is possible that we will fight the Hungarians earlier. So we want to have them as a rival. Lithuania will probably fall under the Polish Union in a moment. So these are always free power projection points. Austria will definitely be our enemy in the near future. So it can also be our arrival. States and privileges for them. Here the fun will be different than usual. Because we have to watch out for the crown land. Which is white color here. In our case, I will be very interested in diplomatic and administrative points. I will not hand out military ones. The next thing is supremacy over the crown. And we only take it. I do not want to exaggerate when it comes to the influence of the states. Because I will want to conquer quite a lot in the near future. Thanks to this, I will get a lot of crown land, which I will need in the process of changing our faith, because we will change our faith to Catholic, so we do not sell the land, but we take it as much as possible. The mission to a cheaper military advisor is welcome, especially since I am doing a trick on manpower and its recovery from the recruited army, and that we have professionalism, we can burn it anyway, if we want to recover this manpower very quickly. What I'm going to offer you now in the Ottoman Empire can be slightly radical, namely, we need allies because it is the electors who will vote for us. That's why I'm taking a temporary alliance with Bohemia. I will generally want to conquer them later, but now they will be useful to us. And what I want to do is to improve relations with every monarchy among the electors, like Palatinate, Saxony, Brandenburg. There is also an option, if we can quickly change our fate, to an alliance and royal marriage with Burgundy, which tempts me a bit. A bit! So I will start to improve relations with them. As for our advisors, the Ottoman Empire starts with a perfect administrative advisor, which is half as cheap. So we want to recruit him. Unfortunately, we do not have such good advisors when it comes to military and diplomatic. So here we take level one man or diplomatic reputation guy. It'll be very useful to us. Anyway, we still have a very strong ruler, a very unique form of government, which will also give us very strong successors. Whatever. But the Ottoman Empire has nothing to complain about at the start. The money is running out. I am talking about money and such an event at the beginning. Cool. So we take corruption and get rid of corruption. Not, oh, did I already say that we always move this indicator to the right at the beginning of the game? As for the doctrine of our fleet, we will not need it at the beginning. But it is possible that we will be at war with Venice soon. That's why we could use galleys if you plan not to go to war with Venice take trade. Although it really starts to come in handy only after 1550. This Byzantium played a very strange campaign in this game. An alliance with Moldova and the war with Epirus and the papacy for the very start. It's like I would play this Byzantium. Poland, as usual, chose a personal union with Lithuania. We have a claim for Constantinople. We burn professionalism. We did the mission. It's time for war. I forgot about Moldova. No, who? The second country I will attack is Hungary because there are quite a few Catholic provinces here. And of course, the most important Catholic province in the area, Hunt with Gold. From Moldova, I only take money. And from Byzantium, only Byzantium and some money plus Athens. Of course, I could do more, but later. This will allow us to complete the mission, a city that the world desire. It will also allow me to move the capital to Constantinople. Ooh, I think I cheated Epirus. Look, the Pope got a black flag, but this battle is equal. I, on the other hand, I am now taking an alliance with the Burgundians and Palatinate. I think I said the name of this country well for the first time. I forgot that I had to withdraw the warranty on Ragusa. Um, what do I need it for? No, Kaffa and Azov are our provinces. After all, Ottoman, the first conquest, and I increased our crown lands by 6%. Well, almost 7%. And as the first, of course, we introduce military technology, which is very good. It's time to go to Hungary, and probably with the help of friends. But yes, I know, I remember. The Bohemia will usually want these provinces, and more precisely, our future gold mine. So we have to get there first. By the way, I am also attacking Serbia, because I will want to get Kosovo from them. Of course! Our allies are bravely fulfilling their duties. They are using all manpower of the Austrians and Hungarians. I like it very much. 
In the meantime, our diplomacy is working hard. So that you know, the Catholic countries somehow did not get scared of this Ottoman threat that is coming. I take the following provinces from the Serbs, as long as Venice does not conquer them. After Herzegovina, maybe, plus money. Oh, I can call Burgundy to this war, why not? No way, the Ottoman army 200 years too early near Vienna. So let's burn it! To put it bluntly, the Bohemia have a little bit of a problem, but I will not help them. Here are the treacherous Bohemians. They came out of the My War. I don't know why. Okay, let's humiliate Austria for now and take money reparation from them. We'll take care of it for good in future. And I take the following lands. Why in this way? Because I like such a nice circle around this province and I can take money and so on. We do not care about aggressive expansion. We will sit on our asses and do nothing for about 15 years. Really, this is part of the tactics. Uh, we add... Well, maybe apart from this province, because I took this one for a simple reason. I will release a vassal here. Where is Samvarat? We delete it here too. I also conquered this province for a very simple, different reason. Here is gold. And in fact, here are the Catholics. Here are the Catholics. Look, a Catholic is standing here. Okay, we need them. When the rebels appear, they like to fly in a straight line straight to our capital. That is, somewhere here they should fly in this way. But it's not always like that. Sometimes they go in a circle. Okay, and since we have already gathered the Catholics for the first time. Now what we have to do is change our diplomatic attitude because we will need a lot of these points and as soon as possible. Wow, okay, let's make a vassal of them. Aha, uh -huh, reform, so I think we will reach our nobility's pocket, especially since we will weaken it. And we will take tax revenues. They probably give us a lot, at least for now. Taxes are cool, especially if they pay for you. Okay, give me this gold here, I want more gold now. But why you lower my taxes? Burgundy lost the war with France, but I don't think it lost anything. Probably. And Philip III is still alive, wow. And now I'm waiting for one thing. Until this modifier called separatism falls below the threshold of active missionary then these nationalist revolts will turn into religious revolts. So I still have to wait half a point per year. Oh, mother math. Long. At the same time. You know, we can't conquer too much because I don't know if you know how it works to convert a given country into a needed religion. Simply, this religion in a given country must be more than 50%, unless it is from a religious group. So, you know, a religious group is something like Christians, Catholics, Orthodox, Hussites, and here are the cops. This is a religious group. In the case of a religious group, it is quite easy to change religion. But at the moment when we change outside the group, we must have more than 50% of the religion in the country, or it must be a dominant religion. So it must be the most I never remember. For me, the religion that dominates me is Sunnism. It is a national religion. So yes, yes, I have to have more Catholics. At the moment, Zunis are 42%, Catholics are 11%. And you know, I have to have more Catholics than these types, so I can't conquer the Sunni provinces. But I think I could conquer Orthodox provinces. So maybe for entertainment, I will crush the rebels. Oh, I remembered about this privileged strong duchess. We'll take it because I see a certain opportunity here. I even said a very big opportunity. I know, Ottoman and vassals are a very strange solution, but sometimes it is useful. And we have a vassal, as they say, from love to hatred. One step. The first development of the era. And I will be honest, I am strongly considering an aggressive expansion, possibly the transfer of the vassals. But good for Ottoman, this is the most important. Bigger guns. Yes, I love this son much more than that. The future of patriarchy. What patriarchy? No, in today's times, as you know, patriarchy is not much, right? Let's be modern. Okay, the basic trade is more or less done, but let's expand the city center of Constantinople. Only two more years and this separatist will be lower. I don't know what happened, but Austria somehow lost all the imperial authority points, did not carry out any reforms. No, the woman is not the successor. What did they spend it on? The first idea we choose for the Ottoman Empire is a diplomatic idea, but this time not because we want to conquer more. True, we will conquer a lot, but later. We need a diplomatic reputation and relations. A very good combination for diplomats are humanistic ideas that allow you to reduce aggressive expansion very quickly, which will also make you have a very stable country. And then choose offensive ones, which will allow you to boost your army even faster. A very good combination and additionally shorten the period of separatism and stability in your country. 
I mean, you will have a more stable country, not a less stable country. You know what I mean. Oh, here, look at the humanistic ideas. And, ladies and gentlemen, we have Catholic zealots in this province, so let's delete this fortress right away. In addition, to speed up this whole process, I took autonomy. I kept it for this moment, it increased the tension by 10 points. And of course, we don't want to convert this province, so keep missionary maintenance down. All in all, I took the defenders of faith and started converting also in the province next door. Because why not? In this province, this is the province next door, not this one. And here, we have to be very careful. Namely, if we see that, I don't know, Hungarian separatists who are in this region are starting to break through the Catholics, we have to delay them. I mean delay, not provoke. Oh, let's introduce a renaissance. And thanks to that, we introduce crystals in Constantinople. Again! I always get this event here, in every country if I can. This is too strong an economic bonus. Nice, Catholics grow strong for us quickly. But why? No? Well, fortunately, we have the army right next door. Let's crowd the rebels in that case. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are waiting. I will never understand how these rebels work, right? We are Catholic rebels, that's why we are going to obey the Catholic province, because we want to convert Catholics. It's logic. And unfortunately, each province occupied by them costs us some percent of the crown land. But somehow little. Fatality. Yes, it went here all plus four, but unfortunately with these rebels, I don't feel guilty. Another approach uh, I cut off a little earlier. Now the rebels, and there it is, they went. Okay, we need to remember next time. I will definitely remember it, for sure, to cut off the rebels with vassals. Let's turn on the forts, because I usually have to forget about them. Oh, and you see, we have such requirements regarding the change of religion, or being the Christian religion group, which in fact I can say that they can change to orthodoxy earlier. I didn't think about it. Oh, these Balkans are burning, and I'm just waiting for no one to destroy these rebels. You really have to teleport to the province next door? Why? There couldn't be more of them here. What is it supposed to be? What a luck! They got a black flag! Okay, I'll tell you that these points are now lost much less than before. I paid attention to this. And it seems to be dependent on the development of the converted provinces now. Before it was always 1% for the province, now it is much less. Although if they convert my capital, I don't know what will happen. Well, we'll see how many percent I will lose for the capital. No, we won't find out. I forgot to look. I changed the order, I took the second offensive because we have a very strong a diplomatic reputation is here. It is always useful in the political game in Holy Roman Empire and as a third we will take humanistic. Well, the Catholics are now equal to most of us. But now, yes, we can accept their demands, but we get a lot of autonomy. That's a lot. Hmm, what will happen if I take back these provinces? And okay, we have to leave at least one province. Athens will be sacrificed. And the Catholics have become our official religion. Unfortunately, this meant that we lost our awesome form of government. Yes, I know, I heard Ottoman. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Um, does it pay to lose a strong government for being a Catholic and an emperor? So unfortunately, we will also stop having these cool events that I forgot to show you. For good rulers, unfortunately, they are associated with our form of government. But we have a chance that now some countries will start voting for us. And now they vote for the Bohemia, but why? Here, especially for this, I kept this mission for diplomatic reputation. Well, we already have two votes. And I have more land than I had? Why? Let's take the standard privileges now. Ah, uh, prestige is a problem. We need prestige. It's time for Poland. And it humiliation. <laughs> it's like the Prussian army, yes. Beaten, but the prestige is mine. It's just a pity that there is so little of it. He tempts me to take the Bohemia in the personal union. It tempts me. You are 25 years old. It's legal. Two electors vote for us, and unfortunately two for Austria. We have to convince the Bohemia somehow. Although we need more prestige. Pauls, I'm coming! This will be a good battle! But why did they get so much prestige and I nothing? Oh no, I got it. They didn't get it. They got a military tradition. We'll hire an advisor on another battle. Prestige. And another prestige. In the same place. Such a good minister! Well, let him give us prestige. And three votes for me right away. Well, we have to wait for the emperor to die now? Probably from old age. At some point, for sure. The Polish army is over. We are withdrawing from this war. Oh, they are four electors vote for us already because prestige on the plus? I, I don't believe it. I keep wondering why I can't make it up. Guess what I forgot to raise. A great war for dominance in the empire. 
because I really had to start the war so that the electors would stand on my side in this war and not on the emperor's side. Then, as if to say, they don't like him and vote for me more willingly. Well, I really like this event now. And that in the meantime, I finished the war with the Pope, we can further increase our diplomatic reputation. Now it's really just the emperor has to die. Finally, I am the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire and I have no reforms. In 1486, it will be a massacre. For example, now Teutonic Order joins us to the empire. Only he is a bit small, but always something. Now that I have integrated Transylvania, I can join the Holy Roman Empire, which means that the electors will vote for me more willingly and we will practically not lose the position of the emperor. Oh, I can also carry out the first reform. How nice. So we are the emperor. If you liked what I presented to you here in this episode, remember to leave a subscription because then you will come for the next episodes, I hope. And what am I going to do next? I will honestly say that now I would like to carry out reforms as soon as possible be up to proclaim a pisterum or however you pronounce it. And you know what is the best? I would restore the Sunni religion to the Ottoman Empire. That's why I will not continue to convert these provinces. However, in order to carry out reforms quickly, we must conquer Prague from the Bohemia. Here is a very powerful monument. Then I would play in breaking Poland, in breaking France, and the smaller countries released. It would slowly join the Holy Roman Empire. If you want to see the continuation of this episode, of course, let me know in the comment. And you, dear viewer, I invite you to watch this episode from Byzantium, in which I play the Byzantine Horde, and I'm going to conquer the world. Oops, I mean India.